The fascination with classic gaming seems to be at an all-time high lately. The level of excitement from the recent announcement of original Xbox titles being made backward compatible with Xbox One, the constant whining for the virtual console to come to Switch, a massive amount of hype surrounding the SNES Classic Edition. All of these are examples of the incredibly high levels of interest that people have in the retro gaming scene these days. All of it makes me wonder why. Why is retro gaming so popular? Do we have a lack of good modern titles? Are people bored of the newer games that they're playing? I don't think it's any of these reasons. 2017 alone is filled with a variety of different game releases. There's basically something for everyone. On top of that, we've just been introduced to three new machines within the last year. The PS4 Pro and Nintendo Switch, which are already on the market, along with the Xbox One X, which is launching in November. All is going well with each of the three console manufacturers. And on top of that, games from both third party and indie studios are regularly being released. The modern gaming scene definitely seems to be in a healthy condition, and yet, so many people are clamoring for games and hardware from the yesteryears. Now, it's not uncommon for people to be interested in retro, classic, and vintage items. Whether it's clothes, cars, electronics, decor, music, movies, you name it. No wonder we have phrases like, old but gold, and it's an oldie but a goodie. With that said, the retro scene in the gaming world has really been taken off within the last few years. Take a look at the sudden popularity of retro gaming themed YouTube channels for an example of this. So what brought this wave of hype and interest about? Well, gaming has finally reached the prime age to actually have retro content. The earliest true video game can be traced back to about 1958 created by physicist William Higginbottom. It was a simple, tennis-like game, but this is basically where gaming as we know it was born. Things kept progressing through the decades before really taking off when arcades became popular during the 70s. Game consoles also began to hit their stride during the 70s and early 80s with systems like the Magnavox Odyssey and the Atari 2600. Then there was the infamous Atari Crash. It wasn't until Nintendo stepped in with the NES in 1983 that the industry really turned into the massive juggernaut that we know it as today. Keeping the year 1958 in mind, you can technically say that gaming has been a thing for about 59 years. But if you start counting from when gaming really became popular with the Atari 2600 and then later on with the NES, the timeline shrinks to a little over 30 years. No matter which way you look at it, the ultimate point is that gaming hasn't been around for very long. Now. 59 years is a pretty decent length of time for just about anything to be in existence, humans included. But this is minimal compared to the amount of time that other entertainment mediums have been in existence, specifically film, TV and radio broadcasts, along with recorded music. To avoid turning this into a mini essay on the history of entertainment, let's quickly go over the ages. Recorded music came about in 1877. Motion pictures, or movies, came about in 1900. Radio broadcasts came about in 1906. TV broadcasts came about in 1928. From this list, we can see that the oldest entertainment medium we have is recorded music, with the earliest form of it having arrived all the way back in 1877. That's exactly 140 years ago. In other words, recorded music is older than any human that's currently alive. Meanwhile, with gaming being 59 years old at most, there are definitely a good number of people who are currently still alive that existed well before the first video game was ever a thing. I have a live example. My grandmother is pushing 80. The first video game to achieve a level of true popularity would be Atari's Pong, which came out in 1972. Counting from then, we have a timeline of about 45 years. That means that anyone who's currently in their 30s and 40s would have been born during the age where gaming really began to take off. Those folks are the center of this whole discussion. Why? Well, that's because they were kids when gaming hit its stride. Back then, video games were seen mostly as being toys. 
the folks who were in their childhood and teenage years during the era of Atari and then the Nintendo versus Sega age are now adults. A lot of them have kids of their own at this point. To these adults, gaming is a legitimate childhood memory. There's nostalgia attached to it. And that right there is the core of retro gaming's insane level of popularity right now. Nostalgia. As I mentioned earlier in this video, people have always been into retro items regardless of what category they fit into. When it comes to gaming, the older folks who are most fond of them have now finally hit the age where they can really feel nostalgic. It's that powerful emotion that drives interest in anything that's a few years or even a few decades old. Many companies today are using nostalgia to increase interest in their products because it's basically business gold. People can't help themselves when it comes to having fond memories from their past. To give an example, have you ever cleaned out your room or your attic and came across things or pictures or anything that you haven't seen in a while? What about meeting a friend or family member for the first time in so long that you can hardly remember the last time that you met? In all those cases, most people get very excited when that happens. For whatever reason, our brain jumps for joy when it notices something that hasn't been around in such a long time. I'm 18 years old, so there isn't much I can really get nostalgic about yet. Even so, I have been having that feeling a little bit recently. I've come across old shows that I totally forgot existed, and each time it's been the same reaction. Wow, I remember that. It's been years. It's always a pretty exciting moment when that happens. And it's that right there is what's driving people to lose their minds over retro gaming. They want to reconnect with their past and relive the memories of when they were younger. They have feelings attached to those old systems and games. Now that doesn't apply to everyone. You do have others who are also interested in retro gaming, but they weren't even alive during those days. In cases like those, there are kids, teens, and young adults who are checking out what games and systems their parents and or older family members were into all those years ago. And then you have others who just want to see where gaming really started and how it's grown into the complex, detailed worlds that we have today. Indeed. Gaming has come a long way in a relatively short period of time. It's a lot younger than things like movies and recorded music, but it completely blows past them in terms of the technological leap. Now, I have to admit that it's kind of unfair to make a comparison since the technology required to bring games into existence did not even exist during the same period as those other entertainment mediums. But there's another issue too. Video games still do not have the same level of respect as those other forms of entertainment. As mentioned before, games were typically marketed towards kids and then later teens when the industry first began to become popular. While that's obviously changed these days, you still have people who see adults that play games as overgrown children. We're definitely getting out of that, but it's still not completely gone. Eventually, we will get to that point though. Gaming is a multi-billion dollar industry today. After systems like the Wii and DS and even the Xbox 360's Kinect, a lot of adults and even seniors can say that they've played a video game at least once in their life. So as gaming continues to progress, let's never forget how it all started. Little dots moving across a screen. Thanks for watching.